The Shanghai European Chamber of Commerce met with the municipal government last Friday to discuss the city's 100 measures aimed at liberalizing and improving the business environment. This is the first time such a meeting had been held, and our reporter Mi Jiayi talked to Chamber Chairman Carlo D'Andrea to see what he and his members think about the implementation of the reform so far. During the talks, did the Shanghai government provide a timetable for these measures, and what's your expectation on that? Uh, for the meeting, this is the first time that the Shanghai MOFCOM, the European Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, had the opportunity to meet face to face together mm -hmm. with uh, our members. We know how hard uh, uh, the Shanghai government is working in order to uh, implement and to uh, put in place reforms, but sometimes this message does not arrive to our members, mm -hmm. which they are still facing problem in market access, which they are still facing problem in IPR protection, in the custom, in uh, set up the company. What is missing is a clear timeline <laughs> of uh, reform. Mm -hmm. Because you can always say you can do it, but if you don't have a deadline in which you can uh, deliver, you can always postpone. Uh, we cannot invest in the put our investment in the foundation of hope, hoping that the reform will happen. And this is the reason why uh, the investment into China are only, from European company, are only seven, eight billion US dollars. Instead, uh, that one into the American market are over 150 billion dollars. We know one part is dedicated to financial opening up. So in this sector, what kind of opportunities do you see for European companies? We have seen that uh, they took away the cap for the foreign bank in order to be uh, even uh, the majority stakeholder. This for us, it was a good news because for many years we have been advocating this to happen. But indeed, it happened too late. The problem is that now we are not interested anymore in acquiring the majority stake mm -hmm. of a Chinese bank. First of all, because it's expensive. And second, because we are not seeing that the Chinese uh, banks is willing to be acquired <laughs> by a, a foreign institution. And also the problem is that the market share of the foreign banks is like 1.6% uh, of uh, a cake of 100%. You can understand that this is really a tiny, tiny part <laughs> of everything. If we, we can have some reform and some relaxing uh, in the issue of the relative license, I believe that uh, European banks are willing to invest as well. We know that China-US trade tensions is growing, so how are European companies doing amid the current trade picture? When we are discussing of European business in China, this trade friction definitely uh, is a sensitive matter because we are living in a in time where the supply chain is quite globalized and uh, or maybe you have the customer you produce in uh, China but you are selling uh, to US mm -hmm. and uh, for this we have to uh, European business should reshuffle their uh, way of doing business in China mm -hmm. and uh, when two countries they have this kind of uh, trade friction it it may happen that few European uh, companies can get into the crossfire. And uh, we have uh, carried out uh, an internal survey in our chamber, and we realized that over 50% of our uh, uh, companies are uh, looking uh, which remedies they should take, because this issue of uh, the trade uh, dispute between China and the US can complicate their uh, life, business life in, in the Chinese market.